When we want to factor something that's in just the form of x squared, where the leading coefficient is 1, this is fairly straightforward. It doesn't have a lot of fancy things. Now, we're going to look for two factors of this final term that together will make the negative 7 in the middle. Now, technically, everything is addition. But when you have differing signs, you don't actually add the numbers. It's technically a subtraction. So what I do is say, what two numbers multiply to give me 12 and add to give me 7? And that's going to be 4 and 3. And since it's a negative 7, I want them to be minus. Another way to do it is to say what two things multiply to give you 12, and you put the 12 on the top, and add to give you negative 7, and you put the 7 there, and you can organize your thoughts. You've got a 4 and a 3, and you can see clearly that you want them both to be negative, otherwise it wouldn't match up with the bottom term. Over here, we have the same thing. We say what two factors of 12 will subtract to give us 4? And that quickly gives us 6 and 2. Which one gets the minus sign? Well, you want it to be a negative 4. So we need the larger number to be negative. So x minus 6 and x plus 2. And it is as simple as that. The reason I do, I use this sign as a clue is for the next two problems. The reason I use that, the sign of the final term, is to not get caught in this trap. We're looking for two factors that multiply to 30 and together give us 13. And a lot of you want to say 10 and 3, but it is completely incorrect. And it is because of this minus sign. We're looking for two factors of 30 that subtract to give us 13. Because I already know it's a subtraction problem, I don't fool around and get suckered into picking 10 and 3, I automatically look for other factors, like 15 and 2. I want it to be a positive 13, so I'm going to subtract the 2. And this factors to x plus 15, x minus 2. Same thing with this problem over here. 6, factors of 6 that will give you a 5 are 6 and 1. You could use those to subtract. Or 2 and 3, we could add those together. The way we know which one to use is what factors of 6 add to give us the 5. I automatically know to use 2 and 3. They're both minus because I have a negative 5. So try out the next four problems and bring those to class tomorrow. When we factor trinomials in the form of ax squared, that's when there is a number, a, a coefficient in front of x that is not 1. If you encounter this, the first thing you should do is double check, can you divide it out of all the terms? And in this case, no, so we're stuck with it. Some of you like guess and check, and that is fine. But I wouldn't suggest it when you have a number like 12 because it has a lot of factors, as does 4. If you're going to guess and check, at least narrow it down. Step 1. You're going to multiply the first and last terms. So I'm going to say, what is... 12 times negative 4, and it is negative 48. Then I'm going to ask myself, what two factors of 48 will subtract to give me 13? This is when knowing your divisibility rules really comes in handy. Take a moment and try and figure out what that is. All right, so which factors of 48 will subtract to give us 13? It's going to be 16 and 3. And it's going to be a negative 16. Now, unfortunately, you are not finished. What we're going to do now is we're going to do factoring by grouping. We have successfully split this middle term, and we have made it into its original negative 16x plus 3x. And so we are going to factor this set of four numbers. For those, for those of you who like to guess and check, now, you would want to find a combination of 12 and a combination of factors of 4 that would multiply to give you 16 and 3. You don't want to do it blind. 
So now step three is to write all four terms. And now we're going to factor this set and we're going to factor this set of numbers. What can you pull out of 12x squared minus 16x? Well, you can take out a 4 and you can take out an x. And now you need to write what is left. If we divided 12x squared by 4x, we'd be left by a 3 and then an x. And if we multiplied, if we took negative 16x and divided it by 4x, we'd be left with a minus 4. Now you might be worried about this 3x minus 4 because they really don't have anything in common. They have a 1 in common. We're going to take out a 1 and it's going to be a positive 1. You must have a sign here. And we're left with 3x minus 4. You know you factored it correctly if in this number and in this set of numbers you have the same thing. And we do. 3x minus 4 and another 3x minus 4. So what do we do? We pull out the 3x minus 4, and all that's left is the 4x plus 1. And so that's how you factor. We are going to try another one, but I'm going to finish writing the steps over here, and then we'll try the next one. You can see the, the steps next to us. We're going to move this down a little, and I'm going to zoom out so that you can maybe see the steps while we do the next problem. Or maybe not. We're going to try this 9x squared business. Step one, split the middle term by multiplying these two to get 36. What are the two factors of 36 that will give us a negative 20? Well, 18 and 2, when you add them together, will give you 20. And we want them to be subtracted. So. Do not get suckered into saying this, because if you multiply your first terms together here, you do not get 9x squared, you get x squared. So we need to write all four terms out. Let me get rid of this. So we're going to write 9x squared minus 18x minus 2x plus 4. It doesn't matter what order you write them in because it'll work both ways. If we take this, we're going to pull out a 9 and an x, and we're going to be left with x minus 2. Here, when this number is negative, they really are telling you, please pull out a negative number. So I'm going to pull out a 2, but I'm going to pull out a minus 2. And when I do that, that leaves just regular old x, and it's going to change this sign to a minus 2. And I know that I did this right because this now has a match in the second set of numbers. So if you pulled out that x minus 2, you would be left with 9x minus 2. And now it's factored. In class, we'll show how if you put the 2x first and the 18 second, you still will get the correct answer. There is a witchcraft way, the Isabelle Ibarra sorcerer's way. If you want to know how to use it, Watch the next video.